now in visual fields one has to understand what is visual field okay so visual fields they are defined as the visual space around us when we are looking with straight head and straight eyes then the whole visual space which is visible to us is our visual field okay so you are fixing on a central point with your eyes straight and with your head straight the whole visual space which is visible when we are looking ahead is our visual field okay so visual field is opposite to retina okay so one thing when we are discussing or interpreting visual field one has to understand that visual field is opposite to retina okay so in retina the fixation point is fovea so the central fixation point of visual field is also fovea okay so as you notice over here in this picture the central point the central point which is the fovea of the retina is also the fixation point in the visual field as marked over here now in retina the optic nerve is nasal to macula okay optic nerve is a spot of absolute scotoma okay and it is known as blind spot blind spot is an absolute scotoma due to optic nerve why it is an absolute scotoma because optic nerve does not have any photoreceptors so even when the light is falling on the optic nerve there are no photoreceptors for the transduction so in our visual field there is a blind spot which is due to optic nerve it is called an absolute scotoma that nothing is visible in that area okay if the partial visibility is there then that type of scotoma is known as relative scotoma okay relative means that if you show a brighter target in that area that may be visible or dim target may not be visible okay so that is known as relative scotoma but blind spot is a absolute scotoma and in the visual field the blind spot will be temporal because it is opposite to the position in the retina so here it will be temporally so in the visual field blind spot is temporal fixation point is central okay then we can divide to describe the visual field defects the visual field to be divided by horizontal meridian into superior half and inferior half and to be divided by vertical meridian into nasal half and temporal half okay temporal half will be on the outer aspect nasal half towards the midline okay superior field inferior field okay so these are the things now something more about the scotomas now scotomas they can also be known as positive scotomas or negative scotomas what do we mean by positive scotoma positive scotoma means you are seeing it there is something in the visual field which is abnormal but it is a positive physical presence for example the floaters the vitreous floaters due to musky volentes which we see they are example of positive scotoma okay whereas negative scotoma means there is absence of visibility in that area so they are known as negative scotoma for example blind spot it is an absolute negative scotoma nothing is visible in that area okay now coming to the normal range of the visual field or normal boundaries of the visual field of the two eyes okay so as you can judge the visual field the maximum extent of the visual field is temporally okay because there is no obstruction this side this side there is no obstruction okay the then comes inferiorly okay the superior is bounded by the superior orbital margin okay and the nasal is bounded by the nose okay so that way we can remember that which way is the maximum visual field so as you notice over here the temporal visual field is largest that is 100 degree then is your inferior visual field which is 75 degree superior and nasal are almost same that is 60 degree so this is the normal visual field of both eyes and when we are looking bilaterally these visual fields they merge so binocular visual field boundary will be different okay 
then how do we test the visual field okay the visual field testing the visual field testing is known as or it is done by what is known as perimetry the visual field testing is done by perimetry okay the type of perimetry there it can be divided into kinetic perimetry static perimetry micro perimetry kinetic perimetry as the word is suggesting kinetic means moving okay so here what is happening you are showing a moving target okay so you are bringing a target from the field outer field to the inner part that target is of fixed size and fixed brightness okay but target is moving that is your kinetic per perimetry now examples of kinetic perimetry the simplest one is what is known as concentration perimetry or concentration method okay in concentration method you ask the patient to fix at a point centrally and you bring your finger from the outer field to the inner field and you ask the patient whether the patient is able to see your finger okay so you bring finger which will be moving from outer to inner field so this is a fixed target okay so this is example of kinetic perimetry then another example is your goldman kinetic perimeter okay that is the another example then in the second type of the perimetry which is your static so as the word is suggesting static means that stationary okay so here the target is stationary okay then what is varied the brightness and size of the target is varied okay so here target is stationary and you vary the size or brightness and you judge that whether a brighter target is visible in that area or a lighter target which size target is visible in that particular spot of the visual field and we do the visual field testing okay two examples of static perimeter they are your humphries perimeter humphries field analyzer or humphries perimeter the other one is available octopus so these are the two perimeters which are used okay then the third type which we have mentioned as micro perimetry so what is micro perimetry micro perimetry is when you are judging a small area micro small okay so from these words only you can judge that what is the meaning of this micro means small that you are judging a small area which small area you should be interested in the retina you are interested in the central macular area okay you are interested in the central when you are measuring the visual field of macular area then we are doing micro perimetry okay then we are doing micro perimetry so these are three types of the visual field testing kinetic perimetry static perimetry micro perimetry let me show you the example so this is the example of kinetic perimeter this is a chart of kinetic perimetry okay so this is a chart of kinetic perimetry so here if you see carefully you can see these multiple circles are there okay these circles are known as isopters okay the central point is your central fixation point and then each circle around this central fixation point is your isopter which is at different degree from the center okay so you call it as 10 degree 15 degree 20 degree 30 degree okay and the markings which are made over here are the visual field of that particular eye okay so if i darken it a bit for you to be seen more clearly so like in this eye this is the visual field boundary which has been marked okay so that is the field for this eye that how much field is visible in left eye and right eye okay so that is your kinetic perimetry you bring the target from out to in and at which which point the target is visible then that is plotted on this kinetic perimetry chart okay the second type is your static perimetry so in static perimetry this kind of machine is there this is the example of humphries visual field analyzer humphries visual field analyzer 
we also called is as HFA. Okay, so here what is do uh, what is done? So if you see in this machine, there is a dome shaped area. You ask the patient to place the chin over here. This is the chin rest, and this is the correction for the near vision if it is required. Okay, so here the patient is tested one by one. Okay, the patient will have head fixed and the eye is also fixed on a fixation target. Okay, then there is this dome over there. In this dome, at each point, there are different points to be tested, which is judged by the machine. It is an automated test. Okay, so automated analyzer. Here at different points, the patient will be shown light targets. Now these light targets are static, that they will be fixed in that particular point. But they keep changing in the intensity, that is in brightness. They may be dimmer, they may be brighter. Okay, and in their size. Okay, and that way we plot the visual field that at a particular point which target and it is compared against the normative data. Okay, and that way we get a visual chart like this. Okay, so if you are shown a visual chart like this, this is example of static perimetry. Okay, this is the chart which we are getting on. This particular chart is on HFA, that is Humphrey's visual field parameter. And these spots which you are seeing over here, okay. So these are indicating the different spots which were tested. This is the grayscale picture. This is the numbered pictures where it is showing that how much of intensity was seen, which particular intensity of the stimulus was seen at this point that is measured in decibels okay so here this black one is indicating your blind spot okay in this gray scale picture this black one is your blind spot the rest of the visual field as you can see in this case is considered to be normal so this is the example of static perimetry and this is showing you humphrey's visual field this chart is indicating humphrey's visual field a normal test is mentioned over here supposedly there is a scotoma okay so that will appear as black dots in that area that in the gray scale it will appear as black dots okay supposedly there is a you can say ring scotoma for example in the arcuate scotoma for example so that will appear like this okay so it will be plotted that here the intensity was less Okay, so this is about the measurement of visual field. So with this we have come to the end of this section in which we studied about the physiology of vision. We discuss about the different forms of vision, how do they are they tested and we also learnt about the visual field testing that is perimetry.